My name is Ian Stewart, and in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the additional improvements in WaveLab Pro 11. Let's check it out. So in WaveLab 11, we've made a number of smaller, kind of less flashy improvements, but when taken all together, they add up to a substantial impact. First, the startup assistant has been completely redesigned. It's been divided into two main sections, recent and templates, both of which have additional subsections for projects, montages, audio files, batch processors, and RSS feeds. Additionally, a search field has been added to help you quickly find the files you're looking for. If you make no selection, WaveLab will open an empty workspace, and you can also designate your chosen selection as the default for each time you open WaveLab. Next up, the external effects plugin has gotten a complete overhaul. As you can see, the GUI's gotten a refresh, and there are added output and input level meters, which make gain staging through your external hardware and avoiding clipping even easier. There's also an area to add a photo of your external gear. And by enlarging the photo, you could even capture and store settings for later recall. Other plugin updates include improvements to the handling toolbar. AB comparison has been added for all VST2 and 3 plugins, even if they don't support it internally. So this makes comparing two different settings a snap, no matter which plugin you're using. Just click the AB button to toggle between states. If you want to copy the parameter set from one state to the other, the copy settings button provides that functionality. And there are also undo and redo controls per plugin, which are independent of both the main application history and also the A and B parameter sets of a given plugin. The undo redo history works in both montage and master section plugins. Lastly, there's now an option to save a default setting for any plugin. This is accessed via the preset menu under default preset. For all of you podcast and video creators out there, we've added the clean and enhanced sections from WaveLab Cast. These are accessible from the track inspector, and if you don't see them when you first open WaveLab, they can be enabled via the pane visibility menu. The clean section provides one knob controls to remove hum and background noise, and also a simple and effective de-esser. While the enhanced section provides an exciter that adds even and odd order harmonics, a reverb unit to add ambience, a simple three band EQ tailored to work well with vocals, and a maximizer to help you optimize your output levels. For podcasts, we've also added host service support for five of the most common hosts. You can access this via the podcast page in the file tab, where you can authorize to different hosts, specify show and episode names, and more. Next up, the ducking feature has been simplified while also getting more powerful. If you want to turn on ducking for a track, just right click on the track header of the track you want ducked and enable the show ducking controls option. Now, you can turn the ducker on, select one or more modulator tracks, and adjust controls for attenuation amount, threshold, hold time, and both the timing and shape of the fade outs and fade ins. Another new feature is the ability to replace the audio in a video file without the need to re-encode the video. This is great because it cuts down on export time and the need to figure out what video export settings to use in order to, on the one hand, not reduce quality, but on the other hand, not blow up the file size. So to do this, you just need to import the video file onto an existing video track. You can then either work on the audio that gets imported with the video, or you can completely replace it with an audio file of your choosing. When you're ready, head over to the render ribbon, select the video clip on the timeline, set the source to range of active video clip, give your file a name, check that create video with the resulting audio is selected on your video options and click start rendering. Give it a few seconds to render out the audio file and then replace that audio file into the existing video file. And that's all there is to it. Next, the track header contextual menu has also been updated. Menu items are grouped by categories now, and there are some nice visual elements to delineate the categories. So you've got track related menu items, 
uh, adding and duplicating tracks, splitting tracks into left, right, or mid side, copying clips to other tracks, etc. Then you've got the menu items for the new track lanes features, then track groups, and lastly, your track options. The audio engine has also been updated for full multi-core support in the montage. So now clips, tracks, groups, the montage output, and the master section can all be processed in parallel on different processor cores. This can add up to huge savings in CPU usage. And in fact, you may want to use track groups for no other reason than to split up your final output processing. For example, with stacked over sampling clippers and limiters and other CPU intensive effects. I've seen this cut down the CPU load by 50% or more. So those are some of the additional improvements in WaveLab Pro 11. And honestly, there are a lot more that we just don't have time to cover in detail. For a full list, you can check out the new features documentation that's linked in the description. But if this was helpful, we'd love it if you gave us a like and subscribe. And of course, if you'd like to be notified when we release additional videos, don't forget to ring that bell. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.